so I'm sure y'all read the title of this video and this is my testimony video and y'all know I do not do videos um I used to always play like hey YouTube back with another video but no seriously uh I never thought I have the confidence but I never would have had the confidence if I didn't allow God to use me um so God is using me right now um, so I'm going to give y'all a little testimony of my life and how um, God has saved me from what I used to be to what I am now. So, um, I was raised in church, in church every Sunday. Um, if I had friends spend the night, they better pack their church clothes because we going to church. It wasn't no ifs, ands, buts about it. But it's a difference from being in the church physically and being in the church the church is within you um anyway so i had a pretty normal childhood i mean i was very i was very disrespectful towards my parents i was very disobedient i was very sneaky um i was always not in trouble at school but just my sneakiness would get me in trouble um i was very boy crazy it was like i was looking for um attention or a place to fit in through friendship friendships and boys so that happened to me um going throughout high school i was i mean living the regular portrayed as the regular high school life um partying boys still in all of this i'm still going to church but i'm not in church in church you know um but um it was one i don't know it was i was just always allowing the devil to use me um i would get in relationships just having sex allowing the devil to use me allowing the devil to transfer transfer spirits within me through that um so i really didn't have a relationship with god i mean i would pray every night but outside of that i want seeking him i mean i have a problem here or there i'll seek him but it wasn't that big of a deal to me so um let's fast forward to college so I feel like every college student is kind of just looking for who they are um, looking for where they fit and I was that person I was always looking for like who am I like what is my purpose what's my destiny because I didn't know myself. I didn't know my self-worth. I didn't know how to love myself. I was just basically going through the motions of life. And that had, that caused me to become very depressed. Um, even at a young age, I remember cutting myself. I don't know from what, I can't remember from what, um, but I remember cutting myself. So I went, I went through, you know, dark times depression at a young age they had to be like middle school so in high school i mean in college i remember going through depression my freshman year um couldn't get out of bed couldn't i went to class but i didn't want to like i, I was just stuff but um i just didn't have any motivation to do anything i think i uh I prayed my way through it. Once he got me through it, I'm like, my prayers became short. Like, all right. So, you know, I just really, my relationship wasn't there. Still, after he even delivered me from that dark place that I was in. Um, so, fast forward to let's fast forward to my junior year so I was still doing things to find like I was still doing things to find like where I fit in um fit in life I, I just I just didn't know who I was so I would just find things to try to 
fulfill me, I guess. Um, I was drinking, I was partying, I was smoking. Just something to make me feel alive. So, um, January 2019 is when I went through a very bad depressive um, episode. Did I say depressive? Depression episode. I think that's right. Is that word? I think that's right. <laughs> so, I, I I just remember just feeling dark. I think it was just, I was just tired of not knowing who I was. It was just an emptiness. It was always just an emptiness within my heart that I didn't know how to feel. I thought the fulfillment would come from, um, relationships or friendships or what I was doing in college but it wasn't it was something way deeper than that so I was um I just remember um driving and praying to God asking him just allow an 18 wheeler to come at me head on right now um allow somebody to hit me from the back allow somebody to run this light and hit me it, it was to the point where I just wanted to I didn't know how to feel the emptiness and I was to the point where I was tired of even trying to find out how to feel it because I was trying to do it on my own um so I was also in a relationship at that time and I was allowing the devil to use me throughout my relationship so it wasn't the best relationship um for the person i was in in it with but yeah so i allowed the devil to use me through that relationship so when um i lost that relationship it was like within me like i knew i wanted the relationship but the devil was just like nah he too good so I allowed the devil to get into my head. I allowed the devil to use me. So um, once I lost that relationship, while I was going through depression, this happened for months. This started from January to probably um, I lost the relationship in like May, June. So like this was going on for months. Um, I was just, you know, at that point, I'm like, God, you allowing too much to happen. Like, man, just just off me like just take me because at this point i can't even do it like you didn't you didn't really clear it out the room <laughs> you literally taken my my boyfriend you didn't take in my my friends like just take me out now at this point but at that time i didn't realize he was clearing the room for him he wanted he wanted me to open the door for him. He cleared everybody out to give me the chance to open the door for him. And so, when I went through that and I, you know, I was letting the devil use me. And it was just to the point where I literally hit rock bottom. I was literally at that. I literally did something that I never thought I'd do in my ever in my life because I knew it wasn't me I was let I was allowing the devil to use me and once I did once I did that one crazy thing <laughs> I knew it was like you just hit rock bottom and guess who the rock at the bottom God and can't nobody save you but God now so <laughs> just from hitting that rock um from June to um when school started back in august i had um went on a fast and i was finding myself um within trying to create a relationship with god um trying to get into my word trying to you know allow him to come into my life um and i did i found a sense of peace i found i was finding myself but I got back to school for my last semester and the devil was spinning in my head like this your last semester like you gotta go all out so i was living my best life thinking i didn't found myself like i can't go back now like 
I done found myself. I've been turned up like God had been working on me throughout the summer. Like, I'm good now. I didn't, I'm out the workshop. But he wasn't working on me to put me back into the world to do the world things that I was doing before. That That's not how he works. He was working on me to start allowing him to move within me while I was moving through the world. But I didn't. I didn't allow that. I didn't open up my spirit for him to move. But I was... I was so confined to the things of the world. I loved, I loved going out. I loved drinking. I loved smoking. I loved partying. Like, that was just where I was getting, you know, my fun from. So, so I finished school and I graduated. And, um, so I was at a crossroad. I was like, should I go to grad? I got accepted into grad school. So I was like, should I go to grad school or should I um, stay in Mobile and work or whatever? Um, so that helped me to reach out to God and um, go on a fast from social media from the beginning of the year until you know I got my answer that I was looking for. And he did give me an answer. He told me that I needed to go to grad school. So I started grad school, um, got a job on campus, um, got an apartment, so everything going good. But for some reason, I was feeling empty again. I went depressed because I had already received like a word from God in November, no, in September that I would never have to go through depression again. And I had received that in my heart. So I knew I wasn't depressed, but I knew I was I was empty. So um, once I got my answer to go to grad school or whatever, um, I still took a minute to still be off of social media and kind of out of the world. And um, so I'm empty, but I decided to get back into social media, get back into the world. And that was the end of February when that happened. And um, March the 14th, I went to Nashville. And so for me being on social media, I forgot where I was at. So I got back on social media and um, I stopped giving so much time to God. Um, I was kind of putting him on the back burner. I had got my answer like I knew I was supposed to be in grad school. So I'm in grad school like I really did. It was kind of more so like, thanks. See you next problem. Thanks. So I, uh, I kind of went on my way or whatever. My way. And I got back into um, social media. Started feeling empty. Well, still was feeling empty. And, um... So March 14th, I I went to Nashville, and for some reason, I was just, I hadn't smoked since graduation night, so for some reason, I was craving weed, like, just heavy. I was just craving so much worldly stuff. I was craving um, attention. I was craving, craving weed. I was craving sex. Like, I was just craving boys. I was craving a relationship. I was just craving all this stuff. So, March 14, I went to Nashville, and I had smoked for the first time since graduation. When I tell you that was a life-changing day, that was, that's the day when God came to save me from the world. He saw that I was doing so good. And he saw that I was about to let the devil use me again. He was like, nah. Grab me by my little hair. Like, nah, come on. It's time to go. You can't do you can't go back because I got something so much bigger for you. You can't go back into this world and act like you don't have an anointing over your life. So March 14, God had spoke to me. He told me it was time to wake up. And even then, when he was showing me so much, when he was speaking to me, saying he don't understand why 
people of my generation why we we i mean i'm saying we because i was once doing it while we depend on we to you know feel something that can't be filled that only he can feel like we're we're trying to feel stuff that only god can feel we're trying to seek stuff that only god can give you so um i just even after all that um i could have told him like I, I don't want to do this. Like, I want to be back in the world. I want to, I want to, you know, I want to be with the people I used to be with. I want to do the things I used to did, used to do. I couldn't have did that. He, he allowed, you know, God gives you free will. You can do whatever you want to do. But I decided to do something bigger than me. I decided to surrender to something bigger than me. Because I know... God's will is not my will. And my will will lead me back to depression. My will will lead me back to suicidal thoughts. My will will lead me back to unhealthy relationships. So, I don't know. God put it on my heart to to just share my testimony. Because I feel like depression is something that we all deal with. And it's kind of swept under the rug. Um, suicidal thoughts I feel like it's swept under the rug um, God grace and mercy is so powerful even in the past when I just used him for a quick moment he gave me my answer and I realized when I was going through depression um, I didn't understand why but now I realize he was trying to clear the room and something that you may be going through right now, God's just trying to clear the room so you can open the door for him and only allow him to come within your life. So when I was um, taking my notes for this video, God spoke to me and he gave me a word and it was like, the time is now. The time is now to surrender your all to God, surrender your whole heart to God, surrender your life to God. It's not just about saying a prayer, thinking you saved. You have to surrender your life to Him if you want ever, the eternity with Him. So, um, I feel like we are so not we, because I came out of it. <laughs> I feel like. This generation is full of lukewarm Christians. And lukewarm Christians, um, you'll pray to God, you'll go to church every Sunday. You might sing in the sing in the choir. But once you get out, you back into the world. You back living in folly and Satan's traps. You back entertainment in entertain entertaining demons like you back into the world. That's not what God wants for us. God wants us to give him our life so he can direct our path. So we can hear him clearly to do the work of his will. So a Bible verse that um, I want to share about lukewarm Christians is Revelation 3 and 16. And it says, so because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold. I will spit you out of my mouth. I ain't say it. He said it. And another one is First John um, 2 and 15 and says 2, 2 and 15 and through 17 and says do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. I'm trying to live forever for God, with God. I'm trying to be in heaven drinking wine with God. Like, I don't, I don't want to be condemned to this world. I don't want to be living for something that's not eternal i don't want to pass away with this world because i can't give up my own selfishness ways my selfish ways so that is my word and it's crazy because i was finna close it out but surrender is on my notes as the last thing in the song is playing and saying i surrender 
and that's all God wants you to do. God wants you to come to him with an open heart, knowing that you can't do life without him. Just surrender to him. So if you need help with finding God, if you want to hear more about the goodness of God, if you just don't know where to start, if you want to get into the word of God, anything, feel free to hit me up, um, DM me, whatever. I am available. Um, I'm allowing God to use me so I can do the work of him. So whatever it is, I'm, I'm willing to do. Thank you.